Good evening, everyone. Happy Vesper to all of you. Welcome to our uh, service this evening. We are now live here in Surrey, British Columbia. So welcome once again. If you are watching from uh, the Lower Mainland in Surrey and Abbotsford and other parts of uh, British Columbia, you are welcome. If you are watching from the Philippines, you are also uh, welcome for tonight's uh, service. As uh, we all know, uh, last Wednesday I shared with you about our uh, understanding or the teaching of the Bible about uh, the son who was born uh, and called the son of God or Jesus Christ based on the book of Matthew and based on the book of Luke and we will continue on study on that one and um, this is more on uh, the Old Testament okay so I think we ended uh, our study in the book of Exodus where we try to understand when uh, the statement of Jesus Christ when he said no one has ever seen the Father so who is the God of the Old Testament uh, that Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Moses saw in the Old Testament? And uh, we do believe, based on the revelation of the Bible, that there is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we will continue on this study. Uh, in the book of Isaiah okay so I want you to get your Bible <clears throat> get your Bible uh, hard copy or electronic one and we will see from the scriptures why do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord God Almighty because some people uh, they believe that uh, Jesus Christ is demigod or semi-god. He is not almighty God. So as if there is a hierarchy in God. The almighty and then the lesser mighty God. Okay. And then the Holy Spirit is not God at all. So we will take a look if that is true in the Bible. If that is not true, then we have to reject it. If the Bible is telling us that the Son is also Almighty, then we have to accept it. Now, let me repeat this again, okay? When it comes to Godhead, there are no three gods. There is only three persons in one God. When we say in one God, because the, the nature of God is one. When it comes to uh, the nature of the persons or three persons, uh, that is what we call the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. So we will take a look uh, at the Word of God if that is right and correct. Let's have a word of prayer. Our dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this another week. I uh, will thank you for giving us this rest. And uh, we thank you for sustaining us, Heavenly Father. We once again ask the Holy Spirit to guide us in our study for tonight's uh, message. Help us to understand. And we ask your blessings to be with us all. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So, let us take a look at uh, Isaiah. Isaiah, okay, Isaiah chapter, let us say, chapter 9, and the verse is 6. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, 
and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. As we all know, this is a prophecy about the Son, okay, Jesus Christ. Because in here, for unto us a child is born, to us a child, a son is given. And uh, his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, as you can see here, one of his title or name is called the Everlasting Father. Is he the Father that Jesus Christ mentioned and in the New Testament that no one has seen the Father? I am sent by my Father. Is he that, the, is he that kind of Father? Uh, he is different from that, okay? From that Father. Because... According to this passage, uh, unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the Everest Father, the Prince of Peace. Now, so we're going to look at the uh, broader context of this passage. Who is this Everlasting Father? But as we all know, this is the prophecy about Jesus Christ, okay, is uh, coming to this earth to be born according to this, born to us a son, for to us a child is uh, born to us a son is given. So who is this called everlasting father in the book of Isaiah? Right, so that is the question. So let Isaiah answer that question. Who is this everlasting father uh, mentioned in Isaiah 9, 6? Okay, let us take a look in the book of Isaiah. Turn your Bible to Isaiah. Okay, because the author is Isaiah, so let the book of Isaiah explain that to us. Isaiah chapter 63. Verses 16 and, okay, verses 16, Isaiah 63, verse 16. Doubtless you are our father. So by the way, I'll be reading from, or I am reading from uh, King James Version, Easy Read, okay? Doubtless you are our father. Though Abraham be ignorant of us, and uh, Israel acknowledge us not. You, O Lord, are, are our Father, our Redeemer, and your name is from everlasting. So who is this Father? According to verse 16, this Father is also called Lord, okay? Or uh, sometimes translated as Jehovah. So you, O Lord, are our Father, and he is also called our Redeemer. Your name is from everlasting. So let's go to Isaiah 64 verse 8. Isaiah 64 verse 8 says, But now, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are potter. And we all are the work of your hand. So meaning, in Isaiah 64 verse 8, the uh, Lord here mentioned, but now, O Lord, you are our Father. Um, he is the potter, and because he make uh, Israel his people. And that is why we are the clay, and you are the potter, and we are all the work of your hand. So the people of God address this Lord, their father, because according to 63 verse 16, okay, 
He is the Redeemer. He is the Potter. And according to 64 verse 8, uh, we are all the work of your hand, meaning he is the creator. Okay, that's why the people of God addressed him as Father. Now, when we go back to, again, the book of Isaiah, another reason why uh, the people of God uh, called the Lord uh, their Father is because, look at uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 46, okay? Isaiah 46, chapter 46, verse 3. Look at your Bible. Isaiah 46, verse 3. Hearken to me, O house of Jacob, and all the remnant of the house of Israel, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. As we all know, this is not literal, okay? But uh, 46 verse 3 says, uh, and again in the book of Isaiah uh, 63 and 64, the Israelites or God's people called the Lord Father because there are many reasons. He is the potter and uh, the people of God is the clay. And in here, according to 46 verse 3, uh, God carried his people from the womb. That's why he is also called their father. Right? And Isaiah 46 verse 3, which are born by me from the belly, which are carried from the womb. Another uh, statement almost uh, the same statement uh, Isaiah 43 43 not 43 but 44 Isaiah 44 21 44 verse 21 remember these O Jacob and Israel for you are my servant I have formed you you are my servant O Israel you shall not be forgotten of me so, the God is the one who formed Israel, okay? And that is why he said, I have formed you, you are my servant. Okay, another statement why he is called Father. Here in the book of Isaiah 44 verse 2. Thus says the Lord that made you, and form you from the womb which will help you. Fear not, O Jacob, my servant, and you, Jerusalem, Jer Jerusalem, whom I have chosen. Again, in here it is the Lord that made them and formed them from the womb. That's why the people of God called him Father. Okay? Uh, another statement here, okay, chapter 43, verse 1. But now that says the Lord that created you, O Jacob, and he that formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you, I have called you by your name, you are mine. The same idea, it is the Lord who created Jacob and formed Israel. Verse 7, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, I have formed him, yea, I have made him. So that is why in the book of Isaiah, the Lord is called their father because he is the one who formed them and carried them uh, and created them. That's why the Lord here is called their father. Okay, what happened to this uh, father, to this Lord? In Isaiah 44 verse 6, 
okay? It is the same thing because when you look at my Bible in here, okay? I'll just show you. Beginning from verse 43, as you can see, all in red. And Isaiah 43, chapter 44, is all in red, okay? Meaning, this is the words of God. It is God who is speaking here. They put it in red. So, when I look at my Bible, chapter 43, up to chapter 44, it is all uh, the Lord who is speaking in here. And uh, look at what happened in chapter 44, verse 6. Who is this uh, Father or Lord? 44, verse 6. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and His Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. As we all know, last Wednesday, we found out that Jesus Christ is the last or the first and the last in the book of Revelation and also in the book of Isaiah that says the Lord the King of Israel and his Redeemer in Isaiah 44 verse 6 the Lord of hosts I am the first I am the last and beside me there is no God okay so when you look at this passage he is called what the Lord now, the Lord there is all in capital, right? So, He is the first and He is the last. He, he is also called Redeemer, okay? In another chapter, He is also called the Father. Now, what happened to uh, this Lord in, in Isaiah 48? Isaiah 48. 12 and 13. Hearken to me, O Jacob, and Israel, my called, I am he, I am the first, I am also the last. So, as you can see here in my Bible, from Isaiah 43 to Isaiah 48, all is in red letter there. Meaning, the God who is speaking here is the same God in Isaiah 44, uh, verse 6, the first and the last. Now, again, mentioned in 48, verse 12, my called, I am he, I am the first, I also am the last. Now, verse 13, my hand also has laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens. When I call to them, they stand up together. So he is the creator here. But what happened to him, as you read uh, 14, 15, and 16, you will see that he is the same Lord or God that is speaking here. When you read chapter uh, 48, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then look at verse 16. Come you near to me hear you this i have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was there am i and now the lord god and his spirit has sent me so who is speaking in this verse when you look back at Chapter 48, verses 12 and 13, the one is speaking here is the I am, uh, the, the, the first and the last, okay? Uh, the one who laid the foundations of the earth. And according to chapter 44, okay, 44, verse 6, he is the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, Okay? But based on this chapter 48, 12, 13 to 16, that, that first and the last, the Lord of hosts, according to verse 16, uh, has sent by the Lord God and His Spirit. So the Lord of hosts, the first and the last, who created the heavens and the earth, 
was sent by the Lord God and His Spirit based on verse 16. So as you can see there, okay, that's why the father in the book of Isaiah is not uh, the father that Jesus Christ is mentioned in the New Testament, okay? And that father in the book of Isaiah is none other than the Lord Jesus Christ, which is uh, based on prophecy of Isaiah 9.6. He will be what? Born, okay? In Isaiah 9.6. That's why... Uh, part of his name or title, he will be called Everlasting Father. What else? In Isaiah 9, 6, Counselor, okay. Mighty God. <clears throat> the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Did you get this? So, the Everlasting, the everlasting Father in the book of Isaiah is not the father that Jesus Christ mentioned in the New Testament. Okay, because this one, this father uh, in, in Isaiah 9.6 uh, is a prophecy about uh, the incarnation of the first and the last, the Lord of hosts. Okay, beside me there is no other God according to him. So he, this one refers to the son not to the Father, but part of his title is the Everlasting Father. He's called Father because he is the one who carried uh, his people in his womb, according to Isaiah, according to our reading. He is the one who created them. Okay, He is the Father and they are the clay. And that is why they addressed him as Father. And then he was sent by the Lord God and his spirit based on Isaiah 48 and the verse is 16. Let me read that part again. So open your Bible to Isaiah 48 beginning from verse 12. Hearken to me, O Jacob and Israel, my call. I am he, I am the first, and I am also the last. So who is this, the first and the last? Jump to Isaiah 44. And verse 6, and you will see there, that says the Lord, the King of Israel and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. So, when you go back to Isaiah 48, verse 12, Hearken to me, O Jacob, and Israel, my called, I am he, I am the first and I am also the last. My hand also hath laid the foundation of the earth, and my right hand has spanned the heavens, whom I call to them, and they stand up together. All you assemble yourselves and hear which among them has declared these things. The Lord has loved him, and he will do his pleasure on Babylon, and his arm shall be on the Chaldeans. I, even I, have spoken. Yea, I have called him. I have brought him, and he shall make his way prosperous. Come you near to me, hear you this, I have not spoken in secret from the beginning, from the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. So, the one is speaking, okay, the first and the last is the Lord of hosts, was sent by the Lord God and his spirit. And when you look at the New Testament, it is actually Jesus Christ who was sent by the Father, according to the book of John. But in the book of Isaiah, he is called the Lord of hosts, the Almighty, the everlasting God. And But in the book of Isaiah 9, 6, that is the prophecy that this God will be born, okay? Uh, but his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, the everlasting Father, and the Prince of Peace. Okay? Look at your Bible once more in Isaiah 50. There are many passages in the book of Isaiah. Okay, look at the book of Isaiah chapter 50. And you will see here, Thus says the Lord, Where is the bill of your mother's divorcement, whom I have put away? 
or which of my creditor is it to whom I have sold you? Behold, your iniquities have you sold yourselves, and for your transgression is your mother's put away. So who is speaking here? The Lord. Okay? When you read Isaiah 50, verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, uh, verse 4, you will see in verse 4, The Lord God has given me the tongue of the learned, that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. He wakens morning by morning. He wakens my ear to hear us the learned. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious, neither turned away back. I gave my back to the smithers, and my cheek to them that pluck off the hair. I, he I hid not my face from shame and spitting. This refers to uh, the humiliation of Jesus Christ, right? But as you can see in verse 4, the Lord God has given me. I see it when you read beginning from verse 1, it is the Lord who is speaking. And then in verse 4, there is another Lord God that gives the one who is speaking. Has given me the tongue of the learned. You can sense that. You can see that in Isaiah chapter 50, 1 to 4. The Lord is speaking. Okay, That's why in my Bible, when you look at my Bible, Isaiah 50 there, it's all in red, okay? It's all in red there. And when you look at verse 4, the Lord God has given me, me, the one speaking, the tongue of the learned. So as if there are two persons there. But in Isaiah 48, there are three persons mentioned. The first and the last, okay? 48, 12, and 13. And then... This Lord God was sent by the Lord God and His Spirit in verse 16. So again, this is uh, one example. That is why in the book of Isaiah 9.6, there is the prophecy about uh, Jesus Christ. Okay, uh, But He is also called the Everlasting Father. And the reason why He is called the Everlasting Father is, in the book of Isaiah is that he is the one who created Israel and according to uh, Isaiah 46 uh, verse 3 uh, he is the one that born uh, Israel from the belly and carried from the womb that's why he is called father but this father Okay, in the book of Isaiah 9, 6, the prophecy is uh, prophesied by Isaiah to be born in the New Testament. One of his titles is Everlasting Father. We all know the reason why. He is the one who created Israel and born Israel. And he is the potter and Israel, God's people, is the clay. And that's why he, he is addressed as Father. So this is different from the Father that Jesus Christ mentioned in the New Testament. So let me repeat this again. In the book of uh, Genesis and Exodus, okay, in other parts of the Old Testament, in the book of Isaiah, Jesus Christ, the Son, is Almighty God, especially in the book of Revelation. Now, some people, they have this uh, hard time to uh, understand because they cannot distinguish the humanity and the deity of Jesus Christ, right? So, his deity has no beginning. When theology, when we say deity, it talks about the nature, his nature as, as God. God has no beginning. You cannot find in the Bible that God has a beginning. God has no beginning. He is the beginner. Okay? He is the source of everything. God has no beginning. Uh, the deity of Jesus Christ has no beginning. The humanity of Jesus Christ has beginning. So, let me repeat this again. 
when the author of the New Testament want to emphasize the humanity of Jesus Christ, they will say the man Jesus Christ. I'll give you an example. I'll give you an example in the book of Acts. Open your Bible in the book of Acts. Chapter 2. Okay. When you look at your Bible in the book of Acts, chapter 2, you will find there the great sermon of Apostle Peter. Okay. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22, look at the emphasis or the emphasis of uh, Apostle Peter here. Men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with mighty works and wonders and signs that God did through him in your midst, as you yourselves know, this Jesus delivered up according to the definite plan and for knowledge of God, you crucified and killed by the hands of lawless men. Look at the emphasis of Apostle Peter. Men of Israel, hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God. The emphasis is about what? The humanity of Jesus Christ. There's another example. So when Jesus Christ said, uh, go to your brother and my brother, okay, and <clears throat> uh, he said that, uh, he addressed the Father as my God. If Jesus Christ is God, why he is calling Father as my God? Something like that. Because the emphasis there is about the humanity of Jesus Christ. Okay? So, there is another example here in the book of um, I think Timothy there. There is one uh, mediator between God and man. The man, Jesus Christ. Okay? We always uh, hear that uh, hear that part. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and man. The man, Christ Jesus. The emphasize there is the humanity of Jesus Christ. We don't have any argument with that because we also believe that Jesus Christ is man because he uh, came to this earth, okay, and dwelt among us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. But if the author of the New Testament want to emphasize his deity, then uh, some author says, our God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is the true God in eternal life. Okay? Those are the statements, especially in the book of Revelation. He is the Alpha and the Beginner, Omega, the first and the last. Okay? The Lord God Almighty. So if they want to emphasize his deity, they will uh, use that statement. If they want to emphasize his humanity, again, they will use the man, Jesus Christ. Why he is called the Son of God? Because look at your Bible. Uh, let's take a look at Matthew. Okay. Matthew chapter 1. Verse 18. Matthew 1, 18. Now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph before they came together, she was found to be with a child from the Holy Spirit. And then verse 20, But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Okay? That is one classic statement. But there is another statement in the book of Luke 
Turn your Bible in the book of Luke. Okay, Matthew, Mark, Luke. And you will see there, uh, Luke chapter 1. Verse 31 and 32. Behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name what? Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father, David. Then verse 35. And the angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Why he is called the Son of God? Because the Holy Spirit will overshadow Mary, or come upon Mary. Okay? That's why in the book of Matthew, which is conceived, is of the Holy Spirit. That is why he is called the Son of God, based on Luke chapter 1, verses 35, okay? And also, he is called the Son of Man, because he is uh, the son of Mary, the human. He is also called the Son of God, because the Holy Spirit, okay, overshadow uh, Mary. And in here... The child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. So that is why he is also called the Son of God. Okay, the, that's why he has two nature, humanity and divine or his deity. Okay, so in here, as we all know, well, in the Old Testament, he is called the Father. And Isaiah 9 6 the, the prophecy about his uh, humanity here in the book of Matthew and also in the book of Luke is mentioned in the book of Isaiah 9 6 but his title his name is also called the everlasting father he is different from the father that Jesus Christ mentioned in the New Testament because according to him in John 6 no one has ever seen the father so that is the difference there. So these are the texts that we need to understand, okay? Because I know some people don't know this. Even some of our church members uh, don't know this. So I would just like to share it to you. And if, if you just write down and study this once again, you will see that our belief is based on the Word of God, okay? It is not based on what other people say to us. As we all know, there are some uh, members who want to be, uh, well, let me borrow the, the statement of Paul, who want to be teachers of the law, but they really don't know what they are really uh, talking. <laughs> but I share this with you because I want my church to be biblically based and doctrinally sound when it comes to this kind of teaching. Again, when it comes to Godhead, there's only one divine nature and that divine nature is God. In this one divine nature, there are three divine persons and that is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So when we, when we talk about divine nature, we're talking about the deity, the, the God. When we're talking about uh, divine persons, we are dealing with the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Three divine persons. But there's only one divine nature. Okay? And many people have failed to understand that there, there's no three gods, okay? There's no like three lords. There's no uh, three gods in one person, no. There's no one person in three gods, no. 
It's not like that. Our belief is there is one God who revealed to us as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So, next week, uh, if you have questions, that, that just uh, uh, message me, okay? Uh, send me a message if you have questions. And then next week, I will share with you about the Holy Spirit, okay? After the Holy Spirit, we are going to study about these uh, three persons in the Bible, okay? Because each one is called Lord, but there are not three Lords. And we will see in the Bible that is also biblical. So once again, may God bless you all. And uh, happy Sabbath to all of you. May God bless you and keep you. Let's have a word of prayer. Our dear God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son, who is called Jesus Christ, the Messiah. We do believe that he is our Savior, that he is our friend, and he is our mediator. Uh, through him, Heavenly Father, we have eternal life. And you anoint us by the baptism of the Holy Spirit as a guarantee of our salvation. Help us also to understand, Heavenly Father, this important truth that uh, because of your divine plan, we now understand your love and your grace toward each and every one of us. Accept our worship. O oh Lord, tonight and tomorrow, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good evening, everyone, and happy Sabbath.